video took a little bit longer to produce just because of some technical difficulties I was having, but we'll go over that as uh, we get into the video. So just to start the painting process, what I did with several pieces at a time was clean them up using basic hand tools. Because even though um, the Smoothcast 300 resin does dry to a fairly rigid and uh, durable state, it is still uh, relatively soft enough to be worked with hand tools, but also just a little too soft that you can't really take a power tool like a Dremel tool to it and not just eat away at it. So I hand sanded and prepped multiple pieces, uh, taking off any sprue marks and uh, seam lines and stuff until each piece was smooth and presentable. This is of course because you can't go back and do these things after you put paint on it. So with several pieces prepared ahead of time, I set them down on these little dollar store racks, which you can see already have paint on them, and uh, I set them up to be sprayed with filler primer. And what I would do is I would take them out here on this little painting setup I made outside on the snow, and then uh, I would set them inside the garage with a little space heater on them. And this is for obvious health reasons, just because you don't want to be breathing in spray paint fumes even if you try and set up a an air filter or anything like I normally have in my little work area. So having these dry outside in a semi-enclosed area, as you can see in the back of the box, there is a like an exhaust vent of sorts, but this contains the heat and makes sure it's focused on the the pieces without being too intense just so those can dry in semi-normal conditions. And then once that's done, take them inside, get a good look at them, make sure everything's looking all right, and move those over to the next tray. And this is how we can kind of assembly line them. Once I had spent an hour or two letting those dry out in the garage, switch them over to the other tray, paint them up, and then prime the next batch while that's setting up to dry. And that's why it's also kind of nice to have these stacking trays because they're deep enough that I can sit each gondola in them while having another tray on top of them. And then when they're sitting in the little drying box, the heat that pours out from the heater naturally flows up through the holes in the bottom. But with that done, we have our semi-finished product. Uh, still need to paint the face, but the light brown paint comes out a little less glossy, actually kind of chocolatey looking compared to the very plasticky and shiny dark brown paint I was trying out before. And you can see in a side-by-side -side comparison, light brown does look a lot nicer and a lot smoother. Now unfortunately, there were problems as I foreshadowed. Everything seemed alright until I took a good look at some of them and noticed the sort of dark pockmark uh, air bubble sort of deals on the, the legs of several of the gondolas, which meant that I needed to sand them smooth and repaint them and fix that process. But for whatever reason, when I went to spray it in, the paint wouldn't naturally fill in those tiny gaps like it should. And best I can figure is when I went to prime some of them. Hmm. Now, remember how I, I mentioned that I was painting outside for obvious reasons. You don't spray paint indoors. You get pro tip, do not spray paint indoors. It's all kinds of bad for you. Um, best I can figure is I was going out of my way to keep the, uh, keep the, the paint cans warm by keeping them inside, keeping them at a room temperature, but while sitting outside in that cold wind and everything, that cold temperature can very rapidly affect that paint while it's sitting there. So while I'm spraying, that paint is being affected by the temperature. And best I can figure is that caused it to bead up and for the surface tension of the paint to gather into the, like the primer specifically, to gather into those little air bubbly sort of configurations which uh, unfortunately caused uh, the light brown layer of paint to naturally gather around those. Uh, so that meant sanding them down, repainting them, as I was saying. Uh, I eventually got that figured out um, because, oddly enough, our weather went from 
uh, under 20 degrees Fahrenheit to 60s and humid and rainy, and I took advantage of that day to get a lot of painting done and have these guys fixed up. So we're going to skip ahead to that. Now, the painting process on this was fairly straightforward. What I did first was, of course, grab the sanding sponge and hit any high spots, any areas where the paint had globbed up or dust had gotten stuck in there or whatever. And uh, while it might seem counterintuitive to kind of ruin the paint job before finishing up the, the painting details, uh, these lightly scuffed areas where the uh, finer end of the sanding sponge hit them, um, these will actually kind of become more uniform in color after they've been hit with the final clear coat enamel. So you can see it kind of looks a little lighter, a little dustier anywhere the sanding sponge hit it. But once the clear coat's on there, the color becomes more uniform and smooth again, so it's no big deal. It does also allow the paint to stick a little bit more nicely. And in this case, I had originally tried hand painting the eyes and nose. It's a delicate work, so I end up doing a lot of it off camera. But uh, hand painting turned out to be a big pain in the butt. So I just turned to using a permanent marker to dot in the eyes and nose, and that ended up working up pretty nicely. From there, I used a pink paint marker to kind of fill in the mouth, and I used the uh, more liquidy properties on that to just sort of dot in a little bit of the, the ink there, and then move it around with a toothpick just so it got into all the fine crevices kind of use the surface tension of the liquid to my benefit there. Uh, doesn't need a ton of it, just needs enough to kind of pop that pink color a little bit. And there's just me swishing it around. From there, it's time to mask off the rest of the face. Uh, I had initially tried masking everything all at once and just exposing the eyes, nose, the lips and mouth. Uh, and that turned out to not exactly give me the precision I needed uh, working at this small scale. Uh, it just, I don't know, it wasn't working for me. I'm also not an especially good painter, so that might have something to do with it. But I used a little sculpting tool to press in the tape all around the edges of the area and then very slowly, although this is sped up footage, but very slowly use an X-Acto blade to cut away around that to just expose those little weird lips that Gondola has. And again, a little hit with the sanding sponge just so the paint sticks a little bit more easily to a slightly rougher surface. Now, since this is such a small area, I'm just using a tiny brush and I'm just using the paint that's kind of gathered up in the cap and uh, lightly dabbing it on and filling in all kind of the edges and surface and all that. The issue is this paint is a little, a little thinner, so it takes a few coats. And I end up using a heat gun just to sort of accelerate the drying so I can quickly hit it again with a, another layer of paint. And that builds up and has a richer, smoother color instead of looking kind of thin and translucent. Now the last step before breaking out the clear coat enamel, I'm just using a toothpick here to clean up the edges. This is mostly possible because the paint is still a little fresh, but also because the light brown spray paint on the body is kind of semi-glossy and smooth, while the Liquitex has sort of a different consistency that allows me to sort of scrape it away. And then to clean up any of the little mistake areas where the paint didn't fully uh, transfer through or the tape may have been blocking it off a little bit more than I wanted, just using that same toothpick and a little tiny micro dab of paint to clean up any little problem areas. And from there, it's the same process I was using before with the trays, where I uh, set a bunch of them on a tray, spray them down in one big batch just so not as much, um, in this case, enamel is being wasted, just spraying one at a time, and then leave them to dry for a little bit in front of the space heater. Flip them over, repeat, and then eventually bring them inside after enough time has passed. But with the enamel done, that's kind of the end of the project. I've still got to figure out a better way to get these guys all painted up because I'm not entirely happy with the results of the paint job. And 
you'll see in a little bit that some problems did occur. But the enamel helps to seal in the paint, obviously, makes the piece a little bit more durable, a little harder. Uh, brings down the shine of the glossier satin paints and all that, and uh, helps it to resist heat and moisture and all that a lot better. And since these guys were going to be used as cup noodle caddies, that is a valid concern. This was actually one of the other problems I had. I sprayed the enamel on a little too thick, and it caused the ink around the eyes to run, because it is kind of water soluble, so something to keep track of light layers at first. But everything else kind of came out all right. Uh, I like the way they look. I like the way the colors came out. My main problem is just that the painting process needs a little bit of work. So as a final wrap up, just a little side by side comparison of the two colors I was testing out. So that about wraps it up for the gondola project. Of course, if you have feedback, comments, concerns, suggestions, input, questions, leave them in the comments. Reach out to me on social medias, and uh, I'll be starting up another project soon once I work out the gondola thing. I'll probably do one more little quick update video once they do go up on Etsy, because I do know that some people have been wanting to buy these since they saw me start the project. So uh, that'll hopefully be coming soon once I get some stuff figured out. But till then, thanks for watching, always appreciate it, and I will see you probably in next week's video.